How's it going everyone? Today we got the EVGA for the win 1070. I have a video out there already about the 1070 being shunt modded and it's already been tested and all that. Uh, so what I did here today is I desoldered the 2R2 shunts that I used and I resoldered them back on. Alrighty, let's get her done. Probably the reason why uh, my my soldering wasn't all that great. Uh, my cat ran by my fan and uh, dropped it on my soldering iron. Fix it up with some aluminum tape so it's not that bad. Yeah, I know, I got a big head. This is me desoldering the uh, shunts, the 2R2 shunts that I use. So that way I can show you how it looks beforehand. It's not that pretty beforehand because this has been done a few times now since I did testing on putting it on each individual uh, component, which is each shunt I did individually. So these have been reused a few times. The next time I will be using new shunts. And now let's show you the after. Alright, so I got all these shunts uh, desoldered off of the GPU. Uh, after I stopped shaking around, things a little bit clear up. Here we go, and it does not look great, but that's okay. Uh, I did leave a little bit of solder on it just to make the soldering back on a little bit easier. Okay, here is the 2R2, just using some no clean flux paste, no clean, uh, no clean flux, getting bulk, because why not? Uh, the stuff that's bad for you is going to be better for soldering, so get the best stuff there is. It is harmful, so I recommend either a mask and or ventilation, or if you are outside, that is plenty. Okay, let's get to soldering these little puppies on. Steady. Steady. Alright, not bad actually, not bad. That one, because I did leave the solder on, um, well I did leave just like I said, a little bit of solder on, I didn't have to add solder to it. Um, I already had solder that was already left in place and on the shunt itself, so putting these back on was fairly quick. And by the way, the temperature I'm using is just cranked. 480, as high as it can go. Uh, make sure the soldering iron, if you have like 100 watt, let it heat up. Let it like warm up for like five, seven minutes to make sure it is really warmed all the way through. So that way when you actually contact the solder, it will actually solidify it quickly and not uh, thermal transfer too much heat to the shunts. Um, on the board and the shunt that you're actually putting on it. So here I just flipped the board around just to make it easier for me to solder to. I like using this style of a soldering tip because you can get flat to it. You can get uh, a little bit of heat just from the tip if you want or you can get more thermal transfer just by uh, adjusting the tip up or down or left and right. Um, I will move the board around quite a bit. I will only solder one side on at a time since I don't have a hot workstation or anything like that. This is what I find to be the best method. Just slowly go around, solder one side of each component, make sure they're all nice and straight. Then once you're done that, we'll go on to the other side of the shunt and do that. So here I'm just going to clean up some of the solder, also kind of like preheat things. Uh, the shunt here I am cleaning up the solder, just need to drop it a couple times. Um, this is why I set down some foam, that way I can easily spot the black dot. Uh, make sure you don't have uh, any solder right in the middle of the shunts or anything like that. You don't want anything getting shorted out, so best again, take your time. Make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing and just check things over as you go. 
All right, now I'm just uh, going around the other side, cleaning it all up, just make sure everything's looking good. Again, just take your time. Uh, if you don't have the greatest soldering iron, as you can see, I don't. Um, just let things stay heated up, uh, as in the soldering iron. If you have to, just wave the soldering iron around the shunt, uh, wherever you're soldering to, just to help warm it up. Don't touch anything though, just around it. That way you can just lightly preheat things, um, preheating uh, the soldering joints or just the component, the PC component, PCB, anything that you're soldering to. Warming it up before you solder it will help uh, just the solder flow a lot nicer and it will turn out a lot nicer and be a lot easier to do. Alright, since this one moved, I'm just re-soldering both sides, making sure everything's good, adding on a tiny little bit of solder, and everything's looking pretty good. As you see there, my little technique that I like to use with this tip and doing these tiny little shunts is uh, just pinching the shunt to put it on. Once it's on top of the SMD that you're putting it on, or the shunt that you put it on, if you're doing a piggyback shunt, um, all you have to do is just lightly hold it down with your uh, fine tip needle nose um, uh, tweezers, and then just lightly solder from the tip, bottom tip up, and it will help push and flow the heat and the solder up to the shunt and actually contact the solder that's on the shunt so that way it will heat up that side of the solder on the shunt and it, it just makes it a lot easier you just roll give a little bit of pressure yeah I'll, I'll slip off but the way i'll slip off is always going up so that way there's no chance of me damaging any component on the board always try to work it so that way you're not damaging any component on the board there's a lot of plastic on boards a lot of components that shouldn't be heated up a whole lot and it's best just to work fairly quick have high temperature and work quick rather than low temperature and taking your time on it um, do take your time on looking over your uh, flow joints and the solder itself to make sure no solder is touching any other component uh, after a clean out make sure nothing's gonna fall off uh, just overall just take your time on the quality control after the soldering and during the soldering but also make it quick during the soldering if you can and again just going over the two or two shunts that I put on make sure they're solid Again, this is the shunt on all three, so this is also for the PCI Express and also for the dual pin powers for the GTX 1070. As most of my subscribers already know, I like to copper mod all of my memory uh, for these GTX series cards, uh, the 1070 and the 1080s, 1080i's as well. I will use these uh, pink thermal pads they have a top layer that is very durable uh, they're also very thin so after I lay this on each of the memory uh, actual chips on the board and uh, I make sure I cut these uh, nice and square and make them a little bit bigger so that way they cover some of the SMDs so that way when I put on the copper shims onto each of the memory chips I don't have to worry about the copper touching any components. Also, uh, I do the copper shims because it's just better thermal conductivity, uh, especially for the 30 series cards. For the GDDR5 that's in this GTX 1070, it's not that uh, not that great of a difference. Can only get another extra 75 uh, megahertz out of the memory, which isn't much. I uh, still need to test it uh, with like liquid nitrogen and or um, some sort of dry ice. Uh, so we'll see in the future. For now, um, this is just the uh, power limit mod for the EVGA for the win GTX 1070. And here's a picture from Tech Power Up. I like to go to Tech Power Up and other websites for PCB layouts. 
uh, before I even do any kind of modding at all. Uh, schematics on all these PCBs have been gone over by many people and uh, are up on the website uh, for free for anybody. So go to Tech Power Up and search up the PCB that you're looking for and either the voltage mod, power mod, uh, core voltage mod, whatever you're trying to do, they usually have it and they can help you find for pictures uh, until I get more uh, graphics cards to do mods on. Um, I'm just gonna be doing some smaller mods like this. Uh, in the future, I'm hoping to do mods on all my cards. Uh, when I get more cards, I'm gonna be continuously doing this. So if you like uh, what I'm doing here, please support the channel by liking, commenting, and if you really enjoy and wanna help out this channel, uh, subscribe as well. Again, thank you everyone for watching and don't forget to get her done.